Free tomatoes. To begin, when I was a child, my mother had undiagnosed bipolar and was probably a narcissist. She has always been self-centered and would go through bouts of straight-up mania, depression, and apathy, where she neglected me to a point as well. Especially when she spent a whole week just laying in bed, accusing me of hating her and guilting me for no reason. Anyways, where I lived as a child was very remote. We had limited stock in the shops, yet we had this guy come down with a truck of fruit and vegetables once a week. Everyone just referred to the driver as the fruit man. He would park at three points in town for an hour at each stop for people to come buy stuff. The last stop was always at the end of our streets at roughly four in the afternoon. Now, my mother was obsessed with tomatoes, but lazy as fuck, so she made me walk down and buy the tomatoes every week. I think I did this roughly for three years, between the ages of six and nine. When I was about eight years old, the weird guy down the end of my street started talking to me when I was going to the fruit truck. As a child, I felt obliged to talk to the wanker because of the respect your elder shit. I found him annoying even as a kid. He acted as if we were friends because I stopped and pretended to be interested in his BS. At the same time, a lot of the dogs were going missing in our streets. While a lot of the fence dogs would go berserk, whenever this guy went down the street, people assumed the pound keeper was driving down, picking up the roaming dogs. This was also way before microchipping and desexing was compulsory. With the guy, I tried walking on the other side of the street to avoid him, but he would run out, follow me, and basically force me to speak to him. He also started waiting for me on those days by his gate. I told my mother about this, and she didn't care. Basically, her response was, Where are the tomatoes? So, over a course of weeks, I was hassled by this man when trying to buy tomatoes. One day, the man asked me what I was doing. I told him I was buying tomatoes. He paused, then got really excited. Even at this age, I knew it was strange, but the guy said he had some free tomatoes if I want them, and I agreed. He asked me to come in. I assumed he just meant the front gate, so I walked into the yard, but he started beckoning me to go inside his house. It was a no for me. I can't remember his creepy smile and the spring in his step when he was walking to the front door trying to get me to follow him inside. When he realized I wasn't willingly going to walk in, he took me by the hand and started pulling me towards the door. From that point, everything basically went into slow-mo. While my senses seemed to heighten, even though in reality it was less than a minute, it played loud like a movie scene. I could see this man grinning at me while pulling me towards the door. I could smell this putrid smell like rotting meat. I saw a potato sack on the ground with something dying or dead in it. And when the guy started opening the door, time sped up again. I snatched my hand out of his hand and ran towards the end of the street. I don't think of which way to run, but I went towards the fruit truck. While I was running away, the guy called me everything from slut, whore, bitch, etc. When I got to the fruit truck, I wasn't crying, but I was sulking. The fruit man was a foreign man and said, You no talk to that man. I also brought the stupid tomatoes and had to go a really long way home through our neighbor's yard in dirt tracks. When I got home, my mother didn't even care. It took me an hour to get home. I also told her what happened and her response was, You should have got the free tomatoes, as if I was a dick for not going inside because she didn't have a bad reaction to it. I assumed it was normal, until years later, when I realized I probably would have been abused and or murdered for tomatoes if I went in. The only positive that occurred from there was that the man stopped waiting for me when I went to buy tomatoes. The self scan banana. This isn't even close to being as terrible as most situations on here, and I'm happy for it. For the record, I'm in my early 30s, female and live in Dorset, England, and my body type is short, chunky, and very, very busty. Think Snooky before she lost all her weight, so I don't really get any attention at all. This all started happening a few months ago. I've been employed as a self scan attendant at a large supermarket for a little over six months now. Mostly I work evenings, for a week, as we're open until midnight, and after 8pm, I am required to run the machines alone. It all started when a man in his 40s began showing up before 10pm to use a self-scan machine, tall and with his hair closely cropped, sometimes bald. He seemed pretty normal, other than calling me sweetheart a lot, and I pretty much thought nothing of it. One night during a quiet period, he told me that I was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen, asked for my number and said, 
He was going to come in and bring me a present on my next shift. He tells me that he has been coming in the store a lot and notices that he's never seen me in the mornings. I decline giving him my number and mention that it's store policy, that I am unable to accept any gifts. Afterwards, he asks me to get an employee to help him find the cheapest medium-sized eggs in the store. Someone wanting to buy me gifts and making a huge deal about cheap eggs irked me. So after talking to my coworkers, it turned out he used to be a regular that would stand and self-scan and harass female employees, trying to get them to go out with him. And after getting a talk to from security, had stopped for a while until he noticed me instead. Another time, he had showed up to my section asking me to walk with him to help him find the hairspray for him. I declined and told him I was unable to leave my station, which was true, and offered to send an employee out to him, which he refused. My schedule is pretty much set in stone, and I had the same days off every week, so this guy had figured out my hours and started showing up every night I worked before 10pm. He would go to the self-scan, weigh, and pay for a banana and leave. During this time, I would make sure to keep the store phone close by, and if my shift leader was using it, to chat to his store buddies because the batteries on his phone died, I would very obviously stand in front of our security camera in hopes that security would be paying attention if he tries anything. There were times there would be problems with weighing his banana on the self-scan. He accidentally had his hand on a scale, or he picked up two bananas by mistake, and needed me to redo it, or avoid one which required me to stand right next to him. After a few months of this and many many bananas and even a tomato once, it was almost empty in the self-scan. After he paid, he walked up to me standing in front of the security camera and asked if I'd like to eat it. I replied with a no thank you and he left. Would I like to eat his banana, really? I can't tell if that was an innocent mistake because he thought I was hungry or that it's an innuendo. When I told my coworkers what happened, they would laugh and make a joke about showing him up the next night with those same tomatoes or something instead. As luck would have it, when I went over Brian's head and informed my upper ups of what had been going on, they took things more seriously and asked me to contact them the next time he comes in. The next night my higher up was saying her goodbyes in my section, while banana customer comes up behind me with a hello in his banana. I quickly rushed to my higher up, let her know and she informed security to stop him at the door. Unfortunately, she had to leave and advised Brian and security to speak to banana customer for me and asked me what was going on, as he hasn't really paid any attention before. After giving him the short version, Brian and security told Banana Customer that he may not have done anything wrong, and that people take offense to certain things more than others, and that he was not to go to self-scan anymore for future purchases, and to use the checkout from now on. It's been a week. Haven't seen him since. The Gardener This happened to me four years ago. At the time, I was 17 years old, and I had been offered a job at a classmate's mom's mini market. Here in my country, I'm in South America for context, those, those are pretty common, and sell everything from frozen food to bathroom necessities. Usually people will build a tiny separate building next to their house for it, and work the store themselves. Every condo slash village has about one on every main street. Anyways, my classmate's mom offered me to work there. Monday to Saturday, 8am to 4pm, with some very good cash and free lunch. He lived about a mile away and my house was directly connected to his by a circle path. So I would get to use my brand new bikes as a mean of transportation, basically. The perfect job for a teenager. I did not enjoy working there. Don't get me wrong, I, 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 I actually like working and I like money for sure. But this store had, had too much going on in it. I had to make ice cream cones, bag chicken breasts, laminate ham and cheese again. I think those things already come laminated in most countries. Work the coffee machine and keep everything immaculate and in order. While checking that all the stuff this lady had on her store wasn't expired. Overall, it wasn't really abusive, but she just didn't know how to manage her store or her money. That's a completely different story though. Anyways, one of my many jobs there was keeping an eye on fruit and veggies, meaning checking for the rotten ones, especially the tomatoes, and throwing them away, and refilling the goddamn tomatoes if the shelves were empty. There was only one huge problem for me as a 5'4", 120 pound girl with a 45 pound potato sack. 
For context, right in front of the store, there's a huge green area, and we have public workers, gardeners, who take care of them. They have one specific person in charge of specific areas, so the man would always be there doing his job. Let's call him Pete. Back when only my boss and her family worked their store, they would ask Pete for help to take the potatoes from the car and drop them at the back of the store. He would always help, and the only thing he asked for as payment was a cup of coffee and a sandwich. This man was on his late 50s, didn't go through education, and even though he didn't seem to have any kind of mental handicap, he would not understand that there are limits to how you approach people and what is and is not appropriate. More on that later anyways. Whenever we had to take the potatoes out of the car, my boss would phone him and he would come in quickly, as he had a red bike with an engine attached to it. Everyone was very comfortable with him. He was just an old man who helped with the heavier duties and asked for very little in return. As I started learning the job, my boss wouldn't be around to help me when I had doubts, meaning I was completely alone in the store. I would struggle by myself on moving the potatoes from the back of the store and would often lose a piece of a fingernail or something like that. But because of this, whenever she left, she would ask the gardener to keep an eye on me and help me with it. The problem began pretty quickly. I have interacted many times with people with conditions, and I'm not trying to be rude, but when someone has some kind of mental health issue or syndrome, even if they can normally function and even have jobs, you can kind of tell, and I assure you, this man was completely healthy and normal. Looking back, I think he was using his lack of education as a way to shield his behavior of some kind. And so people pitied him and felt guilt for, for not liking him and tried to take advantage of the girls who worked there. He would fixate on certain topics, always repeat the same conversations, become way too close to me and my coworkers. He would stand up too close and talk some very personal problems with me. Keep in mind, he was 30 plus years older. I was underage. He became another one of the many unpleasant duties I had to deal with on a daily basis. As weeks progressed, he gave me his phone number so I could call him when I needed assistance. I never called him because I of course didn't want to be around him and because I'm the kind of person who thinks they don't need help. When he realized I wasn't calling him, he tried to push me into giving him my number. I never did, so he would stay right in front of the store and come in every 20 minutes. He gave me a bicycle seat, and even though I told him I, I didn't want one, he, he could keep it, thanks a lot. He removed my original brown seat and put the one he got me. He would tell me he was single and owned a house. He called me pretty and tried to play with my hair, etc. I was severely uncomfortable around him, but nobody seemed to be bothered by any of those things. It made me feel very awkward and guilty for feeling these things, which only contributed to the already disappointing feeling of working this unsanitary place. I decided to just do my best to ignore him, to be honest. When he realized I was distant, he started accusing me of being mean with my boss, but nothing else. It was only a summer job, so I, I thought I just had to stand it for a month, and it would be over, but oh no. One good day. Two weeks before I had to leave, he tells me he is in love with me. <laughs> dead serious. Fucking dead serious, too. I was 17 years old and ha honestly ha had no experience with love and such. I had never had anyone tell me something like that. Usually, I'm a very short-tempered person and snap easily and could have told him to stop fucking with me. But this just <laughs> left me speechless. He had already been flirting with me for like two months even though I was underage. He had given me presents. I'd seen him lift two potato sacks on one shoulder, and he could certainly do as he pleased with me. I started to sweat. I was feeling, feeling violated, even when he wasn't trying to approach me. But he just stared so deeply into my eyes that it was clear he was trying to make me feel inferior. I didn't know what to do, and he wasn't leaving the store. My boss arrived like 10 minutes after this, so he started chatting with her, but I was left feeling violated for the rest of my shift. Two weeks later, my contract ended over the summer. I thought I would never see him again, but again. Oh no. There are green areas where I live, too. One day as I was walking my dog, I see a bright red bike with an engine attached to it next to some swings in the park. I recognized it. It was his bike. He saw me and ran towards me, crossing the street even though cars were coming. I have three dogs. One is a pit bull mix, and the other a husky mix, and none of them liked him. You would think my big ass dogs would stop him from standing too close to me, but no. And he only took a few steps back when my pit tried to bite his hand. 
I never seen them so angry. He told me his boss has realized he was slacking on his job to help at the store, but he didn't like that. So he was moved to another area away from the store, my area. He insisted on asking where my house was, just like he insisted on my phone number back in the day. My house was a quarter of a mile away. I told him I lived to the opposite direction because, of course, I didn't want to tell him where I lived. That day, I told my mother about this creepy old man and all the things he had done at that point. She yelled at me for not snapping at him or something like that. Like, she didn't understand this man could carry two of those potato sacks on one. I asked her not to tell my dad because he would get mad. Yes, they are the kind of parents who get mad at things like this because they think it's like my fault for letting this happen or something like that. Mom did tell though. The next day, my father mysteriously offered to walk the dogs and the day after that, Pete wasn't around to be seen. Mom later told me that dad had approached Pete and threatened him. Knowing my dad, he probably told him about his military background and his gun. Pete asked to be moved to another area right there with his boss on speaker and my dad listening. My city is pretty small, so I still see him when I go on longer walks, about four miles from my house, but he no longer tries to talk to me. Instead, he keeps his head down and starts moving faster to the opposite direction. Goodbye, you old creep. Let's not fucking meet again.